When you're eight months into a Call of Duty title and with these events happening in World War II, when you're halfway through one of those, it might become a little bit stale for some players and therefore you're kind of just stuck in this little loop of using everything that you've used for the past. Well, I'm guilty of this. You're probably guilty of this. I know that I always come back to gravitating towards the PPSH. As of recently, I've been using a lot of the AVS-36, which is a newer weapon, so I guess it doesn't necessarily classify as that go-to weapon, but I won't lie. I use things like the BAR. I use things like the Car 98K, those sort of staple weapons out of each classification that players will normally gravitate towards for whatever reason, whether it be they're actually well and far above the performance of other weapons, or if they're something that just feel natural and comfortable to the user. But that said, whenever we're this far into it, it's kind of hard to shake things up, but that's where I like to challenge myself to try and use some different things. So today I want to take a look at four different weapons here that you might not necessarily use all that much that are relatively underrated in some capacity, some maybe more so than others, that I think you can do well with. We'll give you a little bit of a breakdown of the weapon, maybe a little classification for a setup or something like that as well, but I want to talk to you guys about four weapons in particular here at this one that I think you guys will enjoy that are a little underrated. So that said, we're going to be jumping in with four different classifications of weapons, one SMG, one rifle, one LMG, and one shotgun. So I wanted to cover the base on a lot of the different play styles you may have within World War II, so figure let's just jump right in. Firstly, let's start out with what I think is my favorite out of the bunch here that we're going to talk about today, and that is the rifle of the Gewehr 43. Now, the Gewehr 43 was introduced with Operation Winter Siege all the way back in December as one of the first DLC weapons we ended up getting in World War II, and even still, it's pretty solid. We have a handful of different semi-autos within the game. We have the M1, we have the M1A1, we have the Gewehr 43, as well as we have the Type 5. So we have a handful of semi-autos, but to me, I think that the Gewehr 43 is one of the more versatile. Though damage property-wise, the M1 still probably takes the cake. It's about a two-shot at almost any range and anywhere on the body. The Gewehr 43 offers a little bit more mobility in my books and also just feels a little bit more versatile when it's suited for close quarters or long-range engagements. As well, the upped fire rate definitely helps out as well. Additionally, one thing that I love being somebody that loves to use up ammo if they end up needing it or if they just want to stay alive and have that extra comfort zone, the base Gewehr 43 also offers a little bit more ammunition than that of the M1, so therefore you get a little bit more to work with there as well. Might take you one or two more shots depending on where you hit them, of course, and also the range because of that damage drop-off, but overall, I think this one is a little bit underrated. Again, I don't know if I'd put it at the tip-top in terms of the best ranking rifle in World War II, but it's pretty fun to use and it's definitely one you can do well with. Now, in terms of playstyle, some of the other weapons we'll talk about here at this might require you to adjust a little bit of how you normally would play, but the Gewehr 43 offers a pretty versatile and mobile playstyle that comes along with it. One thing that I did like about this is that I didn't have to necessarily play all that much differently than if I were using a different rifle, but again, with the rifle play, I think comes a little bit more of the outside engagements on the map where you're trying to pick people off from the outside, maybe that are in the inside, or maybe vice versa, where you just have that distance between them, but you can take it a little bit more methodically. That's one thing that definitely with the Gewehr 43 being a semi-auto, you definitely want to be a little more methodical because if somebody does come around with a PPSH or with, say, a BAR with rapid fire or something like that, it might be a little bit tougher to counter that. So you want to have your engagements chosen wisely so you don't go in 1v3, but instead you can go 1v1v1. Now, if I were to recommend something very quickly for you guys, I would honestly recommend running a quick draw, high caliber, rapid fire, and maybe a reticle. You don't necessarily need it. A lot of the iron sights for the different variants of the Gewehr 43 aren't that bad, but personally, I like that ability to have that pinpoint accuracy, so I'll take a reticle on this one. A lot of the other weapons that I end up using, I don't use a reticle for, but for whatever reason, it just felt a little bit more homey with this one. But if I were to recommend a different attachment instead of if you don't want to use a reticle, I'd say you can't really go wrong with any of the choices of the extended mags, the advanced rifling, or the steady aim. One thing that I wouldn't necessarily recommend, though, is grip. I feel like that is almost a useless attachment here on this, because when you take a look at the base Gewehr 43, the recoil itself is very manageable, so adding a grip on just kind of wastes a slot, in my opinion. But moving over into the second weapon that I want to talk to you guys about, that dealing with an SMG, that being the Sterling SMG. This was actually just one that was available out of the Quartermaster a little bit ago. Might have been a couple of weeks, maybe about a month back at this point. But regardless, it was available as of recently, and hopefully you guys picked it up. Because it's a lot of fun to use, and I think you guys can do well with this one. Now, if you're somebody that, like me, runs the PPSH or a different base SMG a lot, 
It might sound weird to describe, but the animation is kind of strange on this one. It almost is a completely different way you hold the weapon that throws off maybe the feel, if you want to put it that way, of how the Sterling works. But once you get adjusted to it a little bit, it does start to become a little bit more of a formidable weapon that you can take into whatever match you're playing. The weapon itself is incredibly mobile. It's got a decent range and accuracy on it as well. The one thing that I do not like though about the base variants of this, whenever you have it just bare without any attachments on it, is the fire rate. I'm not a huge fan of that. It's very slow compared to some of the other ones, especially if you end up running, of course, like say the WAF, the PPSH, the M1928, MP40 Type 100. All these other weapons do have a little bit better fire rate than that of what the Sterling does. But if you toss on a rapid fire, it does become a very formidable weapon once again, and it's something that can hold its own. The one thing that I will say about the Sterling though, is that it's not one of those weapons that I would jump into every single gunfight with and expect to win everything. I wouldn't once again, try and challenge two, three players players all at once. I'd want to try and take it a little bit slower than maybe what I normally would play with an SMG, but it still works out tremendously well if you can make that slight adjustment. Because of that fire rate difference, you want to kind of take it at a little bit more of a slower pace and not rush into everything because you're not going to be a bullet hose as much as if you were using a WAF or something. So in that sense, kind of play it back a little bit, maybe not go in full rush happy, maybe 80%, but still regardless, it's an absolute beast of a weapon if you can get the hang of it. Now, as for what I'd run on this, I would definitely recommend again that rapid fire. That's the big thing here with that one. I have been playing around a little bit with the quick draw on it, and also I threw on just a little bit to mess around with how I like the iron sights compared to a reticle. I did put on a reflex sight on it, but before that, I was running a little bit of the advanced rifling on that before, where it was just no reticle, just those three attachments. So, realistically, I would say run the quick draw, rapid fire, as well as advanced rifling. You can even throw on the extended mags if you really want to, but to me, unlike other weapons where I will burn through ammo tremendously fast in each magazine, I do feel like I take it at a little bit of a slower pace compared to other weapons whenever I do have the Sterling. So 30 rounds in a magazine isn't all that bad for me. So that's the SMG. I think that that one, of course, is a lot of fun to play around with. But let's talk a little bit about some of the other weapons. And these ones aren't DLC weapons. So if you guys don't have either of the first two, don't worry, these ones won't leave you out. The next one I wanna talk about is a little bit of one that we recommended way back at the very beginning of the launch of World War II, but it still holds its own. And I don't think that I've seen it as of recently outside of maybe maybe one outlier game where I saw one person using it. That being the Bren. So early on, the Bren got its reputation as being a relatively annoying weapon to play against because a lot of the user base that was using it were really just sitting in corners or picking off people from very far distances, sitting in, again, balconies or something like that. And that's really where it kind of was the annoying part, but it played into the strength of the weapon, that it's a two shot kill weapon at any range. So this thing is an absolute beast. If you're not shooting through a wall, you're gonna be guaranteed a two shot kill if you hit your shots. And so in that case, I like to play around a little bit with this one, maybe kind of hold down an area, be that anchor for a team if we're trying to control spawns, if we're trying to control a flag or map rotation, or even in some of the gameplay you see in the background, even if we're just trying to push back the enemy or push forward the enemy, whatever it may be in say war. So there's a lot of different ways this can play out. Again, I don't necessarily like to play all that much camp happy, but but it is one that it is a much slower weapon. So you do have to take it at a slower pace than just say running into the action and expecting to pick off three, four people right there in front of you. So that's one thing that does take some adjusting, especially for me. I'm always one of those people that like to rush into the action in the middle of the map and try and get everybody out, even though chances are I'm outnumbered in almost every one of those situations. But the Bren being a two shot weapon can afford a little bit of mobility with this and also some lethality with the weapon itself. One big thing that I definitely suggest running on the Bren is a rapid fire because if you've seen it, it is a very slow firing weapon. And I believe it's actually the slowest firing of all the automatic weapons in Call of Duty World War II. It might be tied with or close to just slightly above or slightly below the Stinger's fire rate, but still it's incredibly slow at its base variation. So definitely throw on rapid fire if you have the opportunity to do so. And additionally, I'd recommend the quick draw to getting that up for aiming down sight a little bit faster. Extended mags is one thing that honestly you don't need, but I think is one that really helps because then you don't have to reload. You don't have to worry about that pesky reload time with all LMGs that are just incredibly slow unless you have hustle. And even then it still is kind of a pain. But if you have extended mags, you have 100 shots and 200 in reserve. So unless you plan on not letting go of the trigger your entire life, 
well, I don't think you're gonna run out of ammo anytime soon. One thing that I'd also say to run is specialist on this instead of any other different basic training because then you can end up affording to get the extra things like escalation, like hustle later on down the line. So escalation obviously helping you aim down sight even faster with that quick draw and also hustle reloading if you do have to come to that point. That's something that will definitely help out. So keep those in mind. But the final weapon I wanna talk about is the toggle action. This one is one that I swear I never really even thought about playing around with. I just didn't like it from the beginning. I think that even back in November, I gave it a try and I was like, you know what, dude? I don't like this at all. I'm not gonna play with this. And since then, I really haven't. But I'm trying to get around a little bit once again to play with some weapons that I haven't really played with. And I'm also getting a little bit towards some of the challenges I wanna get done for Chrome Camo. And so the toggle action was on my radar already and I figured, you know what, let's do it. Let's give it a go. And this thing's actually not half bad. At its base, it's not anything too fun to play around with, but if you put on some attachments with it, it does start to increase its potential as a viable weapon. Quick draw, steady aim, and extended mags is what I had on it for a little bit. I don't think in the gameplay, though, that you're watching in the background, I had the extended mags on, though, at that point. But then also, rapid fire is something you can throw on. That really does help. One thing that I didn't really like was, of course, that slight delay in when you can end up firing, but that's to take away from any maybe mods that we saw with, say, the Brecky back in Black Ops 3. But the toggle action in that sense if you end up putting the right attachments on it definitely a decent option in which you can play that close quarters combat again i would not really go for anything outside of close quarters and up close and personal with this because you're probably going to lose that gunfight but if you got a smaller map and one you know you're going to be right on top of your enemies well go for it but ultimately i think that's four weapons here that you can do well with that are relatively underrated some maybe more so than others and maybe some you do see a lot more than maybe i do but from my perspective i don't run into these weapons all that much and therefore i figure you know what maybe they're not used as as much as some of the other staple weapons you might see within Call of Duty World War II. So I figured, let's give it a go. Let's give you guys some recommendations on what you can run for and hopefully enjoy these weapons. But that said, if you're looking to give something a different try here in World War II, definitely try these ones out. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you guys have any recommendations of your own, feel free to let me know about them in the comments as well. But that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding Call of Duty World War II, anything regarding best class setups, tips, tricks, news, information, updates, all that good stuff. We got you covered here up on the channel. So if you guys don't want to miss any of that, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. And if you guys also want to follow me over on Twitter, that's the best place to get connected with us on YouTube, Practical Live on Twitter. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, link is down there in the description below. And if you guys also want to follow me over on Instagram, get a little more active over there. So that link is also down there if you guys want to check that out. But all that said and out of the way, hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace. Yeah.